Hello, my name is Sean Atwood of National Geographic TV's show Bang Up Abroad. I served almost six years in some of Arizona's deadliest jails and prisons. And I've been asked to give advice to someone who may be going to prison, how to behave in prison. When I first went in, an uh, old school mafia mass murderer called Two Tonys, he was serving 112 years, he served over two decades when I met him, he said to me, prison is like high school mentality but with deadly consequences. And he also told me that when someone's first coming in, body language is very important. A guy with a spring in his step, his chest out, he's got tattoos on his arms, he's gonna look like he fits in. And the gang members, the older cons, are watching these guys as they come in. They're like animals, it's raw instinct, survival of the fittest, and they're deciding who they're gonna prey on. So the guy who's looking down, shoulders hunched, he's got, looks like he's got something to hide. He's inviting to be attacked. So go in there with a, with a confident look about you. They also want to know what your charges are. Now, a lot of people are running around boasting that they did this crime and they did that crime. I'm not recommending you do that. Because if you talk to the wrong person, they can actually go to the prosecutor, give that information in, snitch you out basically to get their sentence reduced by getting you in more trouble and getting you convicted for more crimes. So don't go in bragging about what your charges are. However, you do want to let them know what type of charges you're in for because some charges are KOS, which means kill on sight. The gang members are looking to kill certain types of prisoners as soon as they come in, and that includes paedophiles, even drive-by shootings where I was at, because women and kids sometimes get hit, the gang would find out if they had a crime like that, the guy coming in and they would smash him, you know, beat him up severely, you know, six of them would go in in, in a pack and just kick the living daylights out of a guy, and these gang members do this because that's how they earn their reputations and their t tattoos in prison, that's why there's so much violence in there. Also, you're going to be running into some guards right away, and you know, there's good and bad in every profession. Where I was at, there was guards who, uh, they would talk to us, and they would say they didn't like being on the front line of the danger and getting low paid while the boss of the jail was out doing all these publicity stunts. But there's also guards that are complete robocops, but you never know. The best policy is to have as little interaction with the guards as possible, and then you're not going to get hurt by them. A guard came into my cell one time, he looked at the pictures of my girlfriend and he said how beautiful she was and he was really nice to me and then 30 minutes later he stormed into my cell, tore it apart, did a cell search, you know I got strip searched and all this stuff and he was completely psychotic. So be very, tread very carefully around the guards and also if you do talk to the guards and you start to get pally with them, overly friendly, you know the gang rule is Snitches are KOS as well, kill on sight, and the gang will assume, the prisoners will assume if you are getting friendly with the guards, you're giving them information, and you don't want to give that impression at all, because child molesters and snitches are the two most hated categories in prison, and you don't want to give any hint that you've got anything to do with either of those sections of the prison population whatsoever. Next is, you know, you're going to be wondering where to sit. Um, don't go and sit at the wrong table, because... Where I was at, it was all racially divided, and I sat at a table that belonged to the Mexicans. This was in, this was in the Chow order. And the head of the Mexican gang come up to me and tapped me on the shoulder and says, you can't sit here, this is the Mexicans' table. And I'm looking around bewildered, because I just got there, and I don't understand all these rules. And then a white guy comes up, and you know, he, he, he intervened, and he, he explained that I just got there. And, and the situation, situation didn't escalate, but there was a lot of Mexicans were crowding around me, as if they were about to attack me. So... In the beginning, try and suss out who sits where and you know who the more important people are in the area where you're housed, who are the gang leaders. And if you are in for drug crimes, most people are in for drug crimes and that's acceptable with the, with the gang and the, and the prison population in general. Prison pretty much these days of addiction, criminalization of addiction. So you know you can let them know you're in for drug crimes without getting into the details of what you did because the details could be used against you to prosecute you and extend your stay in the, in the prison. Um, every now and then violence is going to flare up. Where I was at, it was almost daily. 
you know, it's, it's a pressure cooker environment. People are so stressed out, it's overcrowded. A lot of the guys are on drugs and conflicts arise. Now, if there's a one-on-one -on -one conflict and you're not a big guy like me, I'm not a tough guy by no means, you know, skinny guy, but I've got good people skills. You know, I worked on the phones for a lot of my life and the disputes that I ended up in, you know, I would generally show people respect and say, look, I apologize. I didn't mean to come across that way. And, you know, I respect you because in prison, your word is your bond and everybody wants to be respected. And if people feel disrespected, fights can happen very easily. For example, you could be walking past someone and the guy says, who are you looking at? Oh, I wasn't looking at you. Uh, I wasn't looking at nothing. You calling me nothing? And the next thing, bam, bam, bam. So, you know, you got to be very careful because things can flare up very fast. But show everybody respect as much as, much as you can. And if a riot ignites, or if anyone gets pepper sprayed around you, there was a riot where I was at, the guards come in, they pepper spray, and as soon as that chemical hits the earth, snot runs out your nose, tears drip out your eyes. The thing to do in that situation is to wrap a wet towel around your head and blink over and over and over because it washes the chemical spray out of your eyes. Um, in, with disputes with people, where I was at, a lot of you know, people were just told to go and fight it out in a cell under the stairs, which is out of view of the guards. And often, you know, because you're living with so many people, you don't want to have ongoing disputes with them because someone could come up behind you, stick a shank in you, anything bad could happen to you at any time. So generally, two guys that have got a problem, if they can't resolve it verbally, they'll just go and have a fight. And then more often than not, you know, they were smoking a cigarette together 10 minutes later, these guys have been fighting. And that's called squashing the beef. You know, there was no longer an issue between those two guys. If you are in there and you're tempted to do drugs, bear in mind, I'm just being realistic now, I prefer people didn't do drugs, but bear in mind that there's a lot of disease in prison. In fact, where I was at, people didn't shake hands because there was so much disease. They bumped fists. That's where that bump fist, fist bumping comes from so that the germs wouldn't be spread. Two thirds of the guys had hepatitis C from showing dirty needles. So if you're going in there and you're tempted to do the drugs, bleach your works, wash your needle, you know, there's so much disease in there, you've got to be really careful um, what you're getting involved in. So that's my tips for someone coming into prison who's new to the system. And if you look at the link below this video, I'm offering free right now my best selling book, Hard Time, to download to any device you've got. You can read it right now on your computer that you're watching this on. Just click on the link below this video. And uh, if you do read it, please keep in touch and let me know what you think of it. Thank you very much.